Good evening. Welcome to the Chapel of the Ascension at Trinity Church for this, our first of several meditative moments for this Holy Week. Before we started the broadcast proper, I wanted to greet you and offer a word of thanks to our parish musician, Tom Kester, who has worked diligently to make music offerings a part of these meditative moments. After this announcement, we will be treated to one of my favorite hymns in the hymnal, My Song is Love Unknown, which I believe really captures the pathos of Holy Week. There will be lyrics to the hymn that will be displayed as Tom plays, and I invite you to take in those words, and if you're comfortable singing out loud, feel free. Otherwise, just enjoy the music and reflect on the beautiful poetry of this outstanding hymn. And then after Tom's music, I'll be back to offer a brief meditation. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This simple prayer which is said every year at the very beginning of our Palm Sunday liturgy, launches us both as Trinity Church and as the church around the world into the most sacred week of the Christian year. Today, Holy Week begins in a way none of us could have imagined just a few months ago. We are unable to gather with our spiritual community. We are sheltering in place. We are dispersed. We are uncertain. We are confused and anxious. Perhaps we are lonely or sad or afraid. Maybe we don't even know how we feel. We've been so busy living into our new reality, learning new technologies, working from home, helping our kids with their schoolwork, worrying about loved ones near or far away, or figuring out how we will cope with losing our income 
or already having our income substantially reduced. For people on the front lines in health care, working from home isn't an option. And days are filled with an intensity that is wearying and overwhelming. Everything, it seems, is now in flux. And all we know right now is that there is still plenty we don't know. When it became clear we would not be able to observe Holy Week in the ways that are familiar to us, I made the decision to offer these brief reflections rather than attempt a virtual recreation of all that we do as a part of our observances at Trinity Church. This is a Holy Week when we will journey to the Last Supper, Golgotha, and the empty tomb in a much different way than any of us would have or could have imagined. As I prepared for this meditation, I kept thinking about these few verses from the second chapter of Philippians, which we read every Palm Sunday. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not re regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Every liturgical observation we undertake in Holy Week is about focusing our attention on Jesus. We remember through our words and actions his great love, his devotion, his obedience, and yes, his sacrifice. For many of us, Holy Week is an unsettling and powerful reminder that our life as Christians began, not with our baptism, but in Christ's selfless obedience. God was for us in Christ, even before the world began. We do not. Indeed, we cannot save ourselves through our own efforts, no matter how laudable those efforts may be. We are utterly dependent upon Christ. Long before our arrival in this life, Christ's sacrifice had already made a different sort of life possible for each one of us. Every year, Holy Week takes us out of our usual preoccupations to focus our attention on who we are as a people who have been redeemed and renewed by Jesus' obedience, death, and resurrection. Dear people of God, even in the midst of separation and isolation, I fervently believe Holy Week 2020 can bring us holy moments if we can find ways to pause, to breathe, to pray, and to contemplate the passion of Jesus, which happened so long ago, but is powerfully present for people of faith right here and right now. This Holy Week isn't about adding more things for us to do, but about giving ourselves permission to sit still and to remember that through the power of the cross and the waters of baptism, we are embraced securely in the love of God, a love that is unshakable, unbreakable, and eternal. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Most merciful God, we give you thanks for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along the way. Let these palm crosses be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who will carry them in his name will also ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the great example of his humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.